personnel selected, Dave, toy restoration expert and YouTuber. Channel code name, Toy Poloi. Welcome to Toy Poloi. Hello and welcome to another video from Toy Poloi. And in today's video, we're going to be restoring its vintage Kenner mask bulldog. As you can see, it's in a little bit of a sorry state at the moment. It was very kindly sent in recently by uh, Michael and his son Matthew, and uh, they said they thought it would be a fun project. So I've been collecting a few parts for it, including the uh, Boris Bushkin figure, and I think we're ready to get on with this restoration. So uh, let's take a look at what needs doing, and then we'll start the project. So here we have the bulldog, and uh, it's not actually in too bad condition. There's lots of bits missing on the front and sort of broken, but uh, the basic truck is in a pretty solid state. Uh, it does actually work. If I press the button on the back, the uh, whole front cab section flicks back you can see it's quite a dramatic change uh, but everything is working we've got the uh, sort of missile launcher we've got to, this sort of panel that flips down here but yeah there are pieces missing you can see that we've got one of the exhausts that comes forward as a gun the other one I have here uh, which isn't attached at the moment so we need to uh, reattach that there is this sort of front bumper section which should hang on there but you can see the clip has snapped off so that doesn't work uh, we have the sort of front uh, grill for the truck in fact I've got two versions of the front grill. We've got this version where the chrome was worn off and the clips are not in bad condition. We've got this one with nice chrome but it has some clips missing so that doesn't actually clip in place. It's also missing all of the stickers. We're missing the little sort of chainsaw bit that comes out the front there. We are missing the missile that goes in the back there and it's generally rather dirty. So what we need to do is to fix all of that and get it working. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is actually give it a good clean. You can see it's pretty filthy. There's a lot of dust and grime and dirt and stuff all over this thing especially if you open it up there's a lot of sort of dirt and dust inside it so I'm going to give it a good clean uh, as normal that's just going to be uh, using hot soapy water with a toothbrush I'm not going to submerge this because it's got metal parts in it and springs and everything you don't want to get those wet because if you get them wet they have a potential to rust and I'm not going to take it apart before I start doing the cleaning because often the insides aren't too bad and too dirty and it's easier just to clean it as it is like this then once that's all done we can start to trying to get it fixed up I will need to take it apart as you can see uh, we have this uh, exhaust that needs to go back in so uh, we've got to take it apart to work out how that goes back uh, and then everything else I think is sort of been going to be constructed on the outside all of these pieces need to be repaired and sort of uh, stuck in place so um, yeah we're going to do a lot of uh, fabricating of bits because we've got to remake that hinge and then of course the final thing is uh, it's missing all of its stickers well it's got two stickers left it's got this one sticker on either door so um, yeah we've got to make new stickers for it and replace all of those because actually without the stickers it's a fairly plain looking vehicle the stickers do a lot of work on this uh, toy so uh, yeah there's going to be a lot of work to get that done so the first thing we're going to do as i say is give it a good clean so uh, hot soapy water and a toothbrush and we'll clean everything off and then we can start fixing all of the issues <laughs> A good clean always makes a massive difference. I say that in pretty much every video I do. Um, just cleaning the toy, taking all the years of dirt and grime off means that it looks a whole lot better straight away. I did take this uh, panel off, uh, the one that's underneath this sort of front cab section when I was cleaning it, because I realized I could easily unclip that and it meant I had easier access to clean in there. Otherwise, everything is pretty much the same as it was when it sort of went for cleaning. Now, the first thing I want to do is to work out uh, how to reattach this smokestack. I'm guessing, uh, we have to just unscrew the bottom of this toy uh, there's a lot of screws though if I just flip this over you can see there's uh, one two three four five six seven eight nine ten screws on the bottom of it and I'm hoping once we remove those we'll be able to see the inner mechanism now with these uh, mask toys they are spring loaded because it's the spring that does all the work when you press that button there's a big spring under here that will pull everything back so I'm imagining when we undo these springs that there may be bits that sort of ping out when uh, we sort of let go of everything so I'm going to try and keep a good track of where everything should be so I know where it needs to go when we put it back together but um, yeah really this is the first time I'm taking this toy apart so I'll just take these screws out and we'll see what we find inside <laughs> Thank you. 
we go that's the bottom of this truck taken off as you can see there's a fairly large spring here this is the spring that flips the whole of the cab section back we've got a smaller spring at the back there which is just what uh, puts the lever back into its sort of main position I'm guessing somewhere along here this piece uh, yeah it must be this piece that pulls out if I uh, rotate this cab back oh I can see yeah there's a mechanism here that clips in place and that's held in place by that little uh, latching mechanism there and then it seems that um, yeah at some point I'm guessing one of these smokestacks has broken and uh, maybe Michael has found a replacement so he's just sent me uh, one with a sort of an unbroken smokestack um, which I guess I may be the only person in the world who's a little bit disappointed there isn't something broken inside a toy I do like it when I open toys and everything's broken because it gives me uh, something to sort of work out fix but it looks like we just have to slot this uh, replacement smokestack in place I can see there's a post on the bottom of it here and that needs to slot into a small hole there so if I pop that down there and push it in I guess you push it in quite far it looks like it's got to go down quite far anyway and then yeah and then it looks like uh, the uh, these sort of track sections here clip onto a part of that uh, smokestack mechanism so it's fairly straightforward and fairly simple uh, that was actually a lot easier to do than I had expected I thought there might be something to fix inside this but it turns out there isn't all the bits that need repairing are on the outside so I'm just going to screw this back together and then uh, we'll start uh, repairing the bumpers and the uh, front grille section getting all of that working okay so that's the bulldog back together and you can see these smokestacks now work perfectly so um yeah that was just a case of replacing one that was missing with an unbroken one now we get onto the bumper which you can see here has uh, two little sort of latches uh, little clips on either side that one is exactly how it should look this one has snapped off so there is no way currently for this to hold in place and it's quite a key part of the front of the bulldog because it sort of clips in uh about here and in uh, sort of the vehicle mode obviously it looks like the bumper and then when you transform it this piece should uh, flap down and it sort of adds an extra little sort of barrier above the driver if I bring in uh, this other piece so that sort of sits in there and then there's a sort of yeah it's like a sort of shield I suppose so you've got the driver being able to look through that hole and then um, he's completely protected by the bumper that flips down so yeah we need to repair this and as you can see it's a fairly clean break and I reckon that we can sort of fashion something out of some two millimeter stuff and maybe use a bit of a half millimeter stein as well I've got myself some uh, digital calipers this is a new tool that I've uh, bought myself because I'm always uh, sort of guessing the measurements of things so I thought it'd be quite useful to have some digital calipers because then I can actually measure things and they're very useful because I can hold them up to these pieces and work out exactly how thick everything is so that's just slightly over three millimeters the sort of uh, post part of this and then the back section there is about two millimeters so I was right so a bit of two millimeter styrene and then uh, some sort of half millimeter styrene to sort of build up that edge there and then we can make a post to stick out the top and I think we should be able to uh, remake this clip quite nicely it won't take particularly long to do I've had a quick rummage through my bag of offcuts this is just offcuts of styrene every time I build something I put the offcuts in this bag because you never know when they're going to come in handy and it just so happens this bit of two millimeter styrene I've already cut for something I can't remember what it was but just by chance that angle is pretty much perfect I'm going to do a little bit of a modification to that cut myself a strip off we'll plastic weld that in place and then build up the edges yeah it shouldn't take too long to do um, and I think it will be strong enough this plastic feels like it will work with plastic but if it doesn't a bit of super glue and we may have to sort of pin it as well drill a hole through there and drill a hole into this piece just to give it some extra strength but I'm hoping plastic weld will work nicely so um, let's just get on and construct something see what we can make
Okay, so there you go. That's what I've managed to make. You can see that's a pretty good match. I've uh, managed to fashion this top bit all out of styrene sheet and use plastic well to attach that all together. Attaching it to the main part of the bumper didn't work. This plastic used on the bumper wouldn't react with the plastic well, so I ended up uh, pinning it as well. So you saw me drill a couple of holes, one into the bumper and one into the new piece that I've made, and I've super glued that all into place. And that is now really quite firm. So I think by the time we put this in the toy, it's not going to uh, sort of have any issues holding it. Because uh, basically, this has only got to sort of clip in place once and then once it's in there's no pressure put on these uh, two pieces in fact I've been looking at the front of the toy and if I undo these two screws I can actually loosen up the uh, top section enough that I can pop it in so I've already tested it and it does work but before we fit this finally we've obviously got to hide the fact that this has been made from scratch you won't see much of it in fact if I bring this in you'll just see the sort of the top edge of it but I think that's uh, enough to warrant painting it so I'm just going to use a Molotow liquid chrome pen just to quickly put a bit of chrome on that uh, and then let it dry for a couple of hours and then then we'll insert it into the vehicle uh, and then once that's in place you won't actually be able to touch this so I don't have to let it dry for the normal sort of three weeks that I would normally do it will be in place and you won't be able to touch it with your fingers so I've got my uh, Molotow chrome pen here this is the four millimeter nib I'll just give this a good shake always give these pens a very good shake because you want to uh, mix all of the chrome up nicely if you don't do this you don't get a very good finish and also it doesn't tend to set properly so make sure you shake them well and for a good few minutes then we'll, we'll put this on, let it dry, then we can fit it inside the front of the uh, Bulldog. Now that chrome's had time to dry, I'm very happy with how that uh, has turned out. There's a little bit of a join there, you can see where the two pieces of plastic have uh, sort of uh, still got a bit of a gluey edge, but the overall effect is very nice and by the time that's in place you will not notice that that has uh, been repaired. So now we can go ahead and fit it and as I said I've uh, loosened these two screws so I should just be able to uh, slot this in place and there's a little bit of sort of wiggle room uh, now that those screws are, are out the way. Yeah there you go and that's in and yeah it looks like it's working nicely so uh, let me tighten up these screws get that all back in place. We'll put the uh, front piece back on as well and we'll test that this actually works. So that's those in place. We need to put this front sort of uh, beige piece of plastic that just clips in like so. So yeah, that's what it should look like when it's transformed. And then when you turn it back down, that rotates forwards. Yeah, look at that, it works really nicely. So there you go, that's the bumper on and in place. And as I say, you cannot see where I have uh, made that little join because it's hidden completely by the front section. I think also by the time we put the uh, grill on that will hide a little bit more. Then if we press the button on the back, this will transform. It's quite a vicious transformation. So um, let's just watch that go like that. That is flipped up. You can see that this piece flips down like that. So we uh, put the driver there and he is then hidden by this bumper that's flipped down. And yeah, you can just about see where I've repaired it there. But overall, I'm very happy with how that has turned out. So yeah, I'm gonna class that bit of this project as done. Now with the front grill I have uh, two of these, uh, Michael very kindly sent me two. One you can see has quite a lot of chrome damage, in fact it also had broken clips here on the back but um, I was able to plastic weld those back in place uh, and that's actually quite interesting because uh, both of these are made out of different plastic. You can see this one is actually made out of a clear plastic and chrome plated. This one is made out of a black plastic uh, and so the plastic weld works really well with this black plastic but as I showed it doesn't work with the uh, clear plastic because that's the same as what this bumper was made from. So I could simply click this one in place and re-chrome it, but actually the chrome on this one is looking so nice it would be a shame not to use it. Uh, I could try and repair these clips but I don't think it would hold. So the simple answer to this is to actually just stick it on with some double-sided tape. So I've got myself some double-sided tape. I've actually layered it up and sort of put a few bits of double-sided tape together because I think one layer of double-sided tape is not going to hold it on because there's just a little bit of a gap between the back of this and the uh, front part of the cab. So layering it up up like this gives me a slightly thicker piece of tape. So all I need to do is take off uh, the top of this double-sided tape and we should be able to stick these two pieces together. So there's that piece. I can stick this onto the back of the grill. There's plenty of space on the grill so it should give a nice firm uh, sort of fixing. I'll take the other side of the tape off. Get my nail under that. Like so. Then we can push that in place and hopefully That'll stick. Yeah, that 
feels good. That's not going anywhere, so that's the grill on. I've also got the uh, fifth wheel part to stick on the back here. Uh, again, Michael sent me two of these. We've got one which is in really nice condition and another one which has got fairly sort of chipped chrome on it. So I'm just going to use the uh, nice one. With the other one, he sent that over, I think, because the Rhino, uh, I made a fifth wheel uh, for that one out of uh, styrene sheet. And it might be possible that I could modify this to do the same job. So that one I may come back to. But for now, let's clip this in place here. So, yep, yeah, that's nicely in place. So that essentially is the Bulldog back together, but it's looking a bit plain because it's missing all the stickers. So uh, let's go into Photoshop and we'll sort that out.
And here we go. This is what I have managed to make. As you can see, it's a nice uh, replacement set of uh, stickers for the Bulldog. So I've just got to cut these out and apply them to the uh, vehicle. Uh, these are, will be available for free from toyploy.com. So you'll just need to go there, download the file and print them onto glossy sticky backed printer paper, which is what I have done here. Uh, and then, as I say, cut them out and we'll just apply them to the vehicle. And it's going to make a massive difference. Without them, it does look very plain. And as I said, I think all of these stickers do a lot of the heavy lifting on this vehicle uh, because without them, yeah, it's not the most exciting of looking things but by the time we add them it's going to look fantastic so let's get cutting and sticking And there we go, that's with all of these stickers applied. You can see it does make a big difference to how this vehicle looks. Without them, it's very plain. And as soon as you add these sort of stripes and details, it really comes to life. I've not bothered to replace these stickers on the doors. These were original stickers. They're a little bit faded, but I think that looks quite nice, especially if we turn it around here. You can see this door's a bit sort of yellowed as well. So it just sort of gives it that little bit of age. And there's also a lot of stickers inside which really do bring the inside of this vehicle to life. If I transform it, you'll see that we've got extra stickers on the back here, which just make it look that little bit more interesting. Now, the last things that are missing on this are the saw blade at the front, which you can see I have already added, and the missile that goes at the back. So I need to thank Mark from the 80s Collector Instagram account because he very kindly has made me a replacement missile and he also made me a replacement saw blade to go at the front. Now, the saw blade he sent was uh, cast in a white plastic. Uh, the original one should be orange, so I thought it'd be quite fun to uh, make a chromed version of that. So I've just used some Molotow liquid chrome pens uh, to colour that in. I did that a couple of days ago so it has had time to set and we've also got this missile here which we can stick in the back of this vehicle so you'll see that that clips in the back here like so. And there we go we have now have a really nice complete looking bulldog. And here we go this is the final bulldog as you can see it looks really quite impressive and if we take out uh, Boris Bushkin there we'll press the button on the back to turn it into its tank mode like that now everything flips out we get the missile launcher at the back we then got to uh, flip over these wheels to turn them into their tank tracks same on the other side and then flip down these and we can put our uh, Boris back 
in his little driver's seat, sort of hidden there at the front. As I say, it does really remind me of some sort of A-team vehicle, the fact you're turning a truck into essentially a tank, but it's a really cool thing. And as a kid, I would have absolutely loved to play with this. And as you can see, it does look very nice in this mode as well. So I'm not quite sure how I'm going to display it, maybe uh, in this tank mode, because I think, as I say, the A-team part of it sort of uh, grabs me on this. I do need to say a massive thank you to Michael and his son, Matthew, for sending in this as a project. It's been very fun to work on. And also a thank you to uh, Mark um, at the 80s Collector on Instagram, because because uh, he helped me out with those uh, missing parts as well. So thank you to him as well. Do check out some of my other mask restoration videos. I've been working on quite a few of these over the recent years. They've been very fun to uh, work on and I'm really enjoying building this collection up. So I've got a few more to come in future. If you need the stickers for your Bulldog or some other mask vehicles, then do check out toyploy.com. I will put all of the files that I create for all of my projects there. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and tap the bell to be notified each time I upload a new video. And thanks for watching. Thanks for watching Toy Ploy. Subscribe for more great videos. You can also follow Toy Ploy on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram.